여러분 안녕하십니까. 저는 오늘 웨비나의 서해를 맡은 한국제약바이오협회 글로벌팀 이지민입니다. 바쁜 시간에도 불구하고 온라인으로 한자리에 참석해 주신 여러분께 감사드립니다. 금일 웨비나는 영국의 생명과학 산업 동향과 대표적인 산업진흥기관을 소개함으로써 국내 제약바이오 기업들의 영국 진출을 다각적으로 모색해보고자 기획되었습니다. 영국은 우수한 기초과학 지식 및 연구 기반을 보유한 대학과 생명과학 산업 연구소들이 바이오 클러스터 중심으로 구축돼 있어 영국 진출을 도모하기 위해서는 바이오 클러스터 내 주요 기관과 정보 및 인적 교류가 특히 중요합니다. 금일 웨비나를 통해 우리 업계 관계자분들께서는 영국의 생명과학 산업에 대한 이해의 폭을 넓히고 다양한 비즈니스 기회를 찾는 의미 있는 시간이 되시기를 바라며 행사 후 배포되는 온라인 설문을 통해 새 연사 기관과의 네트워킹 관심 사항 및 후속 웨비나 주제를 조사할 예정이오니 온라인 설문에도 많은 참여 바랍니다. 금일 발표는 시차로 인해 연사분들께서 사전에 녹화해 주신 영상으로 진행이 됩니다. 모든 발표가 끝난 뒤에는 연사분들이 온라인으로 접속하여 실시간 질의응답도 이어지니 참석자분들께서는 웨비나 끝까지 자리를 지켜주시고 발표 중간에 질문이 있으신 경우 하단의 Q&A 창을 통해 남겨주시기 바랍니다. Q&A는 순차 통역으로 이루어지니 한글로 질문을 남겨주시면 감사하겠습니다. 그럼 본격적으로 연사분들의 발표를 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 먼저 지한성 두 영국 국제통상부 부국장님께서 영국의 바이오 의약품 산업 동향에 대해 발표해 주시겠습니다. 지한성 두 부, 부국장님은 분자생물학 박사로 케임브리지 대학에서 10년간 시니어 리서치 사이언티스트로 역임하신 후 현재는 국제통상부 라이프 사이언스 스페셜리스트로 근무하고 계십니다. 부국장님의 발표는 사전에 보내주신 영상으로 만나보겠습니다. Hello everyone. My name is Jian Xing Du. I'm the DIT specialist for life sciences. I would like to take this opportunity to give you a brief introduction about the pharmaceuticals sector in the UK. The global pharmaceutical market is growing rapidly. Some market reports projecting 7.3% CAGR from 2021 to 2026. Global medicine spending is on the rise, between 2 to 5% per year, while well, exceed $1.1 trillion in 2024. Current COVID-19 pandemic has attracted more investment into the life science sector. It was recorded there are more than $17.2 billion equity funding into the life sciences in the second quarter of 2020, which is the largest ever witnessed. There are many reasons behind this. I think, first of all, is the aging population. People are getting older. Second, is the new technologies like cell and gene therapy, artificial intelligence, new digital technologies are driving the biopharma sector growth further. Third, the emerging epidemic. In the past, we had Ebola, H1N1, now COVID-19. All those driving great demand for health services. Fourth, is the multiple chronic conditions which WTO, WHO has warned there's 11% increase in global disease burden since the year 2001. Number six is growing demand in the emerging markets, particularly in BRIC countries and others in Asia Pacific region. The UK's biopharma industry is a collaborative, mature and dynamic industry. One of the landmark achievements was that the UK helped kickstart the Global Human Genome Project in the year 2001. We have continued to innovate, developing a core biopharma sector, which has a significant role in the global market. The UK is the biggest life science in cluster in Europe, with total turnover at 80.7 billion pounds, over a quarter million people working in this sector, and well over 6,000 companies. In Europe, UK has the highest number of pharma and biotech companies, well over 2,000 businesses here, more than double its competitor, France. In terms of FDI, UK is the number one in Europe 
and number two in the world, just behind the U.S. There are a few areas within the pharmaceutical sector that the U.K. is very, very strong. Vaccines are among the most important inventions in human history. New technologies have created new opportunities for vaccine manufacturing, improving existing vaccines, developing new ones with remarkable speed and efficiency. The UK government has provided over 540 million pounds towards vaccine research and development in recent years. The vaccine sector generates 1.2 billion pounds turnover annually in the UK. Founded by the UK Research and Innovation, the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca were among the first in the world to develop a vaccine for COVID-19. It has been authorized for emergency use by the WHO, and AstraZeneca has supplied billions of dose vaccines to many countries globally. Other vaccines developed by Imperial College and many other research organizations to combat new variants of the virus are underway and hopefully ready in the near future. Within the biopharmaceutical sector, UK has invested heavily in the next generation of therapeutics. You may notice in the previous slides that about 64% of UK biopharma industry are focusing on small molecules, and over 30% is focusing on biologics, and this trend is continuing to increase. Biologics also called the larger molecule therapeutics, have a large complex molecule structure and is more expensive and difficult to produce. So the UK Regenerative Medicine Platform, Cell and Gene Therapy Catapult, and the National Biologics Manufacturing Centre, the UK paving the way in large public health issues. With five consecutive years of raising over a billion pounds in biotech and a 400% increase in investment, since 2012, the sector is in a very strong position in the world stage, especially in Europe. Traditionally, small molecule drugs has been the mainstay of pharmaceutical industry for nearly a century. Any organic compounds with low molecular weight and complexity, small molecule drugs have some distinctive advantages as therapeutics. With new technologies, involving drug discovery and the data analysis, small molecule drugs will continue to provide treatment for many chronic diseases. To make this old industry more innovative, UK has created a transformative solution for the sector, with annual turnover reaching nearly 32 billion pounds in 2019, the UK has already shown its strength globally. The sector is further supported by the Medicines Manufacturing Innovation Centre is a unique state-of-art facility offering transformative solutions in small molecule and fun chemical manufacturing. The UK has also set up recovery trial, the world's largest clinical trial into treatment for COVID-19. As I mentioned earlier, the UK scientists were involved in the Human Genome Project in the year 2001. The Genomics England, which is funded by the UK government, has continued to work with 100,000 genome project, and the Genome UK has an ambitious program to sequence 5 million genomes within the next two years. All those efforts is for identifying individual gene variation, which has the potential to revolutionize the medical landscape. This is so-called precision medicine or personalized medicine. The UK Biobank has the largest scale biomedical database with medical and genetic data from half a million people. The output has been used extensively globally and placed the UK in the Premier League for this sector. So in summary, the biopharmaceutical sector in the UK is one of the strongest in the world with continued development of small molecules. The biopharma industry in the UK has been focusing on vaccine development larger molecules, precision medicine for the future. What has made the British biopharma industry so successful? Here's a summary of UK capability and excellence along the value chain. Start with access to funding, 
the use of new technologies into the sector, research excellence and talent pool, and then clinical trials leadership in the world and strong regulatory regulations in the sector. And finally, product distribution in the UK and globally. I'll go through this one by one. First is easy access to funding throughout R&D process. UK has a mature capital market and is the leading position and a source of capital investment for companies across many sectors. The UK is the second biggest global hub for private equity and venture capital after the US. Biopharmaceutical companies will, able, will be able to access private finance from the business setup through clinical trials and then regulatory approval with series of funding. Government support and tax relief, where often it's 30 to 50 percent of, is more generous, most generous among developed countries. Interestingly, over 80 percent of investment comes from outside the UK, which indicate overseas investors realize how strong of the UK biopharma sector is. Second, application of new technologies. UK is one of the global leader in the development of world-class artificial intelligence technologies. Now it's the number third in the world, just behind the US and China. UK has a world-leading AI ecosystem, and one-third of the European AI companies are based in the UK. Talent pool. Life sciences in the UK is well-known as a forward-thinking industry with a track record of scientific breakthroughs and over 80 Nobel Prizes awarded to the UK scientists related to life sciences. 37 UK universities are ranked among the world top for life sciences. Oxford, Cambridge and the University College of London are ranked in the top 10. UK share of top 1% of life science academic statisticians is 18% which is very, very high. Thus, it has been estimated over 40% of UK biotech companies has been spun out from universities and academic institutions. Number four reason, the world leaders for clinical trials. UK government invested over £175 million each year in research centres and facilities in leading universities and hospitals focused on translation of research and the delivery of early phase studies. With a competitive and collaborative research base, healthcare data assets, and significant capabilities in clinical research and edge of translation, the UK's preclinical and clinical network is world leading and helped many companies to scale up. Each year, over a thousand early phase clinical studies are carried out in the UK, and over a million participants were recruited for the industry. Regulation. The UK Medicine and Healthcare Regulation Regulatory Agency, MHRA, regulates medicines and the medical devices for UK to protect public health. It prioritizes simplified product entry, early engagement, coordinated with other healthcare institutions, including NIHR, NICE, and AAC, and the works allow the industry to streamline the regulatory process. The MHRA has a, global, a strong global reputation for innovation and the leadership in the field of regulation, having been instrumental in shaping the European regulatory system. It has been seen globally as the jewel in the crown of the UK life science ecosystem. A streamlined and the forward-thinking regulatory system provides confidence and accelerates approval. High-quality end-to-end support. The UK network of 1,500 biopharma service and supply companies provide an excellent supply chain that offer a range of services to support products delivery from start to finish. The UK also follows good manufacturing practice and a good distribution practice. Ensuring products are consistently high quality, appropriate to their intended use, and meet the requirement of market authorization or product specification. NHS supply chain consolidates 
orders from over 800 suppliers, saving time and money, and removing duplications of overlapping contracts. Suppliers can benefit from lower sales and marketing costs. Having a single route into the national market, a joint up approach across NHS, and a clear route for innovative products. Springboard for the world. UK is one of the most connected countries in the world in terms of trade, capital flow, information, and the people. UK is one of the biggest recipients of international investment in the world. UK has strong links with the international market to which a biopharma investor can export. UK's top five trading partners are United States, Germany, China, the Netherlands, and France. The UK's healthcare system is one of the best in the world and was funded by the government. UK citizens can enjoy free healthcare treatments and the long-term strategy for the future will be essential for the sustained development. So we have the life science, industrial strategy, and the roadmap, and just long-term plan, etc., in place to see the future vision. By 2027, if the government is planning to spend 3% of its GDP on R&D, which are among the highest in the world. The government's long-term objective for research and development is clear to be the science superpower and invest in the clinical, in the science and the research that will deliver economic growth and social benefits across the UK for decades to come and to build the foundations of a new industry of tomorrow. This is supported by the unprecedented commitment in the 2020 budget to increase public invest, investment in R&D to 22 billion pounds by 2024 and 2025. The life science industrial strategy is the UK's plan to boost productivity, capitalize on the UK's existing competitive advantages in order to build on collaborative environment between private industry and the public health system. It aims to make the UK the home of clinical research and the medical innovation, support high risk science, and build the UK the world class clinical research environment. Here's a short list of biopharma centers of excellence in the UK. You will notice on the top of the list is MRC Lab for Molecular Biology, which is one of the most prestigious research centers in the world, with over a dozen Nobel Prizes awarded to this lab, especially for its discovery of DNA structure in 1962. The second on the list is the Wellcome Sanger Center, which contributed to the Human Genome Project in 20, year 2001. The institute was named after Fred Sanger, who was awarded the Nobel Prize twice in 1958 and 1980 respectively. Another area I want to mention here is the UK's charity. There are many charities actively supporting research in the UK with nearly two billion pounds to the UK healthcare research each year. The Wellcome Trust is the largest UK charity with a research grant between 500 to 600 million pounds per year. Others like Cancer Research UK, British Heart Foundation, and Diabetes UK also providing hundreds of millions of pounds to support UK medical research over the last 50 years. As I mentioned earlier, UK is very strong in clinical trials globally. There are many charities to help companies for patients recruiting and support. There are many trade associations operating actively in the life science sector. Here's just a few examples. Those organizations collectively represent their members and to work with government on many issues the industry is facing. They organize, they organize overseas missions and host delegations from other countries. Hope you may find those organizations have some synergy to work with with those three the association promoting business in the UK. So finally, the here's a summary of the UK biopharma sector. Over 2,200 companies within the biopharma sector, 700 are co-farmer, 
and 1,500 are service supply companies. 82% of the business are SMEs. Top 25 global pharmaceutical market of companies with activities in the UK, many of them have R&D centers here. Cambridge, Oxford, London, our so-called Golden Triangle, have hundreds of staff companies with strong ties with nearby universities. Other clusters in Midland, Manchester, Scotland, and the Wales are also growing strong. Finally, I want to talk about where I come from. Department for International Trade, DIT, is one of the UK government departments to provide support for trade and investment. We have helped overseas companies to access the UK market opportunities and invest into the relevant sectors. We will not only help companies to set up these operations in the UK, but also introduce overseas companies to the network of industrial experts. Once the company is landed in the UK, the company will be able to access various funding programs throughout the UK government, enjoy collaborations with research organizations and universities. The IT have staff based in overseas and in the UK. We could help companies to do market research and even provide entrepreneurial assistance to very early stage companies. We would be happy to support your business expansion into the UK market and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. 구국자님 좋은 발표 감사합니다. 이어서 이바나 포파릭 영국 메디시티의 클러스터 개발 부문 책임자가 메디시티에 대한 소개 및 해외 기업들의 영국 진출 기회 요인과 메디시티의 지원 사항에 대해 발표해 주시겠습니다. 이바나 책임자님은 유전학 박사로 학계 연구, 기술 이전, 임상 연구 매니지먼트, 투자, 사업 개발 분야의 업무 전문성을 바탕으로 현재 메디시티의 클러스터 개발 책임자로 근무하고 계십니다. 이바나 박사님의 발표 또한 영상으로 만나보겠습니다. Hi, I'm Ivana Poparic, I'm Head of Cluster Development at MedCity, and I'm going to tell you today a little bit more about MedCity and the London Life Sciences ecosystem. So what is MedCity? We're a cluster organization for world-leading health and life sciences sector in London specifically. So what do we actually do? is we work in close partnership with London's leading universities and we connect private industry with NHS, university and charity sector, as well as the research institutes that are our members. So why do you need an organization like ours? Well, the reason for that is that London is a co complex ecosystem, which has many stakeholders across academic, healthcare, government and industry sectors. To give you an example, within our healthcare system, we have more than 8 million patients living in London, which is rising to 20 million patients across the greater London region. To work with all of those patients, we have, have more than 140 specialist services and 32 clinical commissioning groups. Those are actually the buyers within the system and 39 acute trusts for secondary, tertiary, and quartary care in London. On top of that, there is a very rich ecosystem of research and academic organizations. Four out of 20 leading world universities for life sciences and medicine are located in London, and they're actually our founding partners. They include King's College London, UCL, Imperial College and Queen Mary. And you can see just some of the organizations within those universities uh, in the middle of the slide that we work with closely. On top of that, there is a lot of capabilities across different technology sectors, for instance, in bioinformatics, where uh, for organizations like Genomics England and 100 Genome Projects and Genomic Centers, there's a lot of research done with industry. Finally, clinical trials in London is one of the top world centers for doing clinical research. In the last uh, five years before the COVID, there was over 5,000 commercial clinical trials so done on behalf of industry in London. And there was more than 50,000 uh, 50, people recruited. 40% of all of the trials done in England are actually located in London. 
And when you put all of that together, on top of that, there are more, more than 5,000 life sciences companies that are registered in the UK, and half of them are in London, which also includes 19 out of 20 global pharma leaders. Besides um, MedCity, there are other cluster organizations in England. One of them is Northern Health Science Alliance, or NHSA, which is our sister organization that covers the north of England, which is marked here in red. They support cluster development by bringing together academic, clinical, and government partners with industry to enable the innovation within their own region. You can also see on the right-hand side their university and NHS members. Like us, NHS works, uh, NHSA works across all life sciences subsectors, and they coordinate the UK's global life sciences offer. So going back to the Met City and to our remit, how do we support life sciences sector in London? We do this through several areas of activity, which you can see in bubbles. Um, Starting from the top, we drive investment as acting as a landing pad for companies from overseas. Uh, companies that are looking uh, to locate in London, we help uh, with providing anything from access to office labor and laboratory space, clinical facilities, experts and potential collaborators, but also links to regulators and relevant government departments. And we help uh, companies with visa application process. We also support development of uh, life sciences infrastructure, and we do that by advising real estate investors and developers, a life sciences industry, as well as the local government organizations. And we help companies that are looking for appropriate location and space within London for any stage of uh, R&D development. We support trade efforts uh, on the bottom, you can see in, in pink, uh, by building international relationships and by facilitating international expansion for UK uh, companies. And finally, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see how we are supercharging innovation and creation of new jobs uh, through a number of MedCities programs, which include things like Investment Hub, uh, which is bringing together uh, investment community and helping entrepreneurs to raise money. For our Collaborate to Innovate program, we help small and medium-sized companies to find the, right, find the right academic and clinical partners and to access the, uh, funding jointly with them. And we also have a number of technology-based platforms, including Advanced Therapies Network, DigitalHealth.London, uh, and Diagnostics Grow Hub, and I will present each of them shortly. So as I mentioned in the previous slides, MedCity has several technology focus areas of which we have developed uh, platforms for collaboration. One of those areas is advanced therapies, and we support initiatives such as London Advanced Therapies or LAT. Founded by Research England, London Advanced Therapies is a consortium of leading researchers from three London top universities, King's College London, UCL and Imperial College. And the group aims to position London uh, and the UK as the global leader in advanced therapies commercialization. LAT brings together academic community and with the support from Beth City, have built a roadmap to catalyze knowledge exchange between London higher education institutions, small and medium-sized companies, and wider industry. Born out of LAT success in leading the charge across the London and UK, uh, we br brought together academic and industry community through uh, UK Advanced Therapies, um, or UCAT. Members come together from a national group to push, push research excellence throughout the whole of the country now. Here you can 
can see some of the areas of strength for London Advanced Therapies Group in particular. I will not describe uh, all of them in detail, but you can appreciate here uh, that they work across all disease er many disease areas such as oncology, respiratory, cardiovascular, central nervous system, liver disease, and so on. Uh, LAT strengths also include different technologies, anything from drug development um, to uh, stem cells, immunotherapy, imaging, and others. And they also address all stages of pipeline development. Another organization I would like to highlight is Advanced Therapies Network, or ATN. Uh, this was, uh, organization was launched in 2018, and its primary focus is uh, being a networking platform for experts across the industry, academic and NHS sectors. Uh, ATN organizes events for members to discuss different topics of interest and also to address specific challenges in commercialization of advanced therapies. The group now has more than 800 members in the UK, and we are very proud to say that we have KPBMA representation uh, and have organized joint events uh, with KPBMA partners. Another area I would like to briefly mention is diagnostics. Um, why diagnostics and why UK? So there are several areas of strengths uh, in our diagnostics research that are also relevant to biopharma industry. And they include areas such as data and digital solutions. Um, London, for instance, is one of the leading locations in Europe for AI and bioinformatics talent, plus access uh, to patient data sets through health data re research hubs in London and beyond. Additionally, in vitro diagnostics and diagnostic services, um, we can say that 90% of UK IVD businesses now sell globally, and they are supported by world-leading regulatory system through MHRA. Finally, uh, MedTech forms the largest part of the UK uh, core healthcare segment with a strong investor activity and R&D expertise that is actually centered in London. So just to quickly summarize the support companies can receive through MedCity's Diagnostics Grow Hub. These include um, university and NHS collaboration, evidence generation and regulatory guidance for getting your product into the system, commercialization expertise, access to the investment, access to R&D space, and finally, access to our uh, small and medium-sized businesses community. On the bottom of the page, you can see the hub members from London's leading universities, research institutions, and NHS. Another MedCity program I would like to briefly mention is our investment hub. This is a network of 450 investors who support innovative early stage life sciences companies. When I say early stage, I mean C to Series A. Uh, we don't have a fund of our own to invest, but we uh, often partner with other funds. Over the last seven years that um, Investment Hub has been going uh, there has been 115 companies presented in our showcase events with over 30 million pounds leverage from the rounds and 7 million pounds of debt from our own members. Last program I would like to mention is MedCity Community, which we have created for life uh, sciences and healthcare small and medium sized companies to connect into the London ecosystem and access MedCity support to grow their business. This is a free online membership platform for the UK and international companies uh, with exclusive webinars, networking events, uh, life sciences briefings, regular updates, and other opportunities, including one-to-one -one, um, meetings with MedCity experts. If you're interested, you can actually sign up, up uh, for community by contacting us online. At the end, I would just like to briefly tell you how we work with organizations from Korea. We lead activities such as matchmaking events uh, like this one to catalyze commercial activity. 
And we also lead UK delegations to Korea, to conferences such as Bio Japan and other partnering events. We work closely, sorry, we work closely with our partner organizations such as KPBMA, UK Department of International Trade, uh, British Embassy in Seoul and others uh, to promote collaborations between UK and Korean life sciences industry. We provide a front door and concierge service to the UK life sciences ecosystem as a whole by working in London, but also with our partners in other regions. And we can connect you to um, government departments, NHS organizations, and as I said, other regional clusters. Finally, I would like to mention a case study uh, that it has that directly benefited from our engagement with KPBMA. So Lyft is a cancer cell therapy company from the UK. We have supported them by linking them to university partners, but also by helping them to secure seed funding. Uh, Lyft have also attended a KPBMA virtual partnering event, which we had in September in 2020. And they have met with KPBMA members which included companies like SK Biosciences and Syntec Bio, Bio. And my last slide, if you would like to connect with us, uh, please uh, contact us through LinkedIn or, on, or forms on our webpage. And I would be very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Ivana 박사님, 좋은 발표 감사합니다. 이어서 마지막으로 카시아 에버럴 세포 및 유전자 치료 캐터펄트 클러스터 개발 책임자가 세포 및 유전자 치료 캐터펄트에 대해 소개해 주시겠습니다. 카시아 에버럴 책임자님은 케임브리지 대학에서 자연과학 전공을 하셨고 임상 및 상업 GMP 생산의 전문성을 바탕으로 다양한 기업과 협력하여 UK 인의 세포 및 유전자 치료 제조 클러스터를 조성하는 업무를 담당하고 있습니다. 카세아 책임자님의 발표를 영상으로 만나보겠습니다. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Kasia Raverell and I am Head of Cluster Development at the Cell and Gene Therapy Catapult. The Cell and Gene Therapy Catapult is an independent innovation and technology organization committed to the advancement of cell and gene therapies. Our vision is a thriving industry delivering life-changing advanced therapies to the world. We are a team of experts with unique capabilities and assets covering all aspects of advanced therapies. We work with academia, industry, and healthcare providers in powerful collaborations to develop new technologies and innovation and overcome challenges together. We're part of the Catapult Network, nine leading technology and innovation centers spanning 40 locations in the UK. Each one of these is independent and not-for-profit and our role is to bridge the gap between research and industry. Together, the Catapult Network forms a crucial link in the UK's rich R&D ecosystem. We help innovators de-risk their innovation strategies and enable investments that will create jobs, trade, and sustainable prosperity. At the Cell and Gene Therapy Catapult, our knowledge base is broad, and we engage with all stakeholders within and across the ATMP sector from the research and development stage of a therapy, all the way through to clinical adoption of these therapies to ensure they reach patients. In the product development sector, we work with universities, hospitals, SMEs, small and medium enterprises, and mid to large pharma, covering the pipeline from R&D through preclinical studies and clinical development, to product commercialization and market access, and then on to clinical adoption. We work with technology and service providers, such as CROs, CDMOs, technology and equipment providers, and supply chain and logistics companies. We also engage heavily with regulators and maintain strong relationships with the leading regulatory bodies. And finally, looking at the sector of therapy payers, providers, and caregivers, we work with government price and market, ac market access agencies and healthcare institutes. The breadth of our impact, therefore, covers both all advanced therapy sectors, on the right-hand side of the slide, and all stages of development, moving from left to right across the side. So just as we work with all sectors of advanced therapies, we address industry needs across the full development cycle. We collaborate with both new and existing therapy developers and support them in reaching investment into their projects, as well as providing skills and training programs to support growth of companies and the sector as a whole. 
In clinical development, commercialization, clinical adoption, and beyond, we work with industry to enable manufacturing innovation, to develop effective technology and supply chain services, and to enhance patient access to these therapies. Now, this is how we translate our supportive industry needs across the entire sector into our areas of focus. So first, we have technology and process innovation laboratories. And here we collaborate with partners to solve problems in areas such as process and analytical development for viral vectors, stem cell expansion and differentiation, bioprocess control, data analytics, and finally, GMP translation. Our preclinical and clinical our preclinical and clinical development teams work with companies to tackle challenges in commercialization of research, non-clinical development, and clinical operations. And we have an expert team supporting companies in GMP manufacturing and supply chain. This begins with clinical GMP manufacturing, scaling up through to large-scale commercial manufacturing. And we're also very active addressing barriers in the supporting supply chain. We focus on clinical adoption by coordinating the Advanced Therapy Treatment Center, ATTC, network program which is a world first UK system of advanced therapy treatment centers operating within the NHS, working together to address the challenges of bringing advanced therapies to patients. And at each stage, we have an expert regulatory affairs group to provide regulatory support to our partners. And similarly, our health economics team provide their expertise across the whole development pathway, developing and applying models and frameworks that help assessing the commercial viability of these therapies into novel payment schemes. And finally, we're future-proofing industry growth with our skills and training focus. We coordinate an apprenticeship scheme, which includes school leavers, new graduates, and experienced professionals studying for postgraduate qualification. This scheme is supplying a ready stream of qualified professionals to sell gene therapy companies in the UK. We also offer specialised training as required by industry, such as bioreactor training, clean room training, and the use of such cutting-edge training techniques as augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, we achieve all this from four facilities across the UK. In London, we have a 1200 meter squared laboratory on the 12th floor of Guy's Hospital. And here we work with different partners to address challenges in analytical characterization, technology and process innovation, viral vector process development and stem cell differentiation. We also have collaboration laboratories where we work side by side with collaborating companies, addressing challenges and upskilling their teams. In Stevenage, we have a world-class manufacturing and innovation center this 7,700 meter squared facility has been designed exclusively for flexible cell and gene therapy manufacturing. It contains 12 segregated clean rooms, allowing companies to perform their own manufacturing in a supportive environment with full access to our expertise. The center can support manufacturing for both small scale clinical trials and is ready for commercial manufacturing with full UK MHRA approval. It is at the heart of the third largest cell and gene therapy cluster globally. In Braintree, we have our large-scale manufacturing and innovation centre, originally set up to support the UK COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing requirements. It is now fully operational as a large-scale innovation centre for cell therapy, gene therapy, and mRNA manufacturing with a large team of tech transfer and manufacturing experts. Now, in Edinburgh, we are building laboratories and offices to maximise collaboration with the wealth of scientific and industrial expertise in the north of England. We will focus on GMP translation and accelerate product development, clinical trials, and clinical adoption. Finally, this is just a reminder that what we do is to deliver impact for growth and advancement of the advanced therapy sectors. The impact that we see here on jobs, investment, clinical trials, and therapies reaching patients are the result of working closely and collaborating with industry and academia, applying our expertise and our resources to address industry barriers and using these collaborations to drive innovation. We have upskilled 3,800 people so far, and we are continuing to work with 104 companies to upskill their teams. Just last year, we've delivered 132 total projects for our collaborators, and as a result, 21 companies supported by us are conducting clinical trials. We've worked with a total of 88 different companies, including 25 university and research institutions and 38 international collaborators. In Stevenage, at the heart of the third largest cell and gene therapy cluster worldwide, our collaborators have raised over 525 million, that's in British pounds, in 2020-2021. The total raised by all our UK collaborators in the same year is 900 million. On the right side of the slide, we can see how, we can see how our work feeds into the overall growing UK advanced therapy ecosystem. 
there are nine therapies now reimbursed in reaching patients compared to just two in 2019. The number of clinical trials of phase three has grown from 14 in 2019 to 38 in 2021. Investment in the UK advanced therapies now totals 3.8 billion, up from 1.6 billion in 2019. And 12% of global advanced therapy clinical trials are represented in the UK. Our work has leveraged research into reality. We've taken barriers faced by companies and transformed them into industrial advantages. And we've attracted investment into the companies that we've collaborated with. Thank you. 네, 카시아 책임자님 좋은 발표 감사합니다. 이어서 온라인으로 접속해 주신 연사분들을 모시고 실시간 질의응답을 가지겠습니다. 하단의 Q&A 채팅창을 통해 연, 해당 연사분과 질의사항을 남, 함께 남겨주시기 바랍니다. 참고로 세렌지 테라피 캐터벌트의 카시아 책임자님께서 금일 참석이 어려운 관계로 셜리 람 사업개발 매니저님과 존 켈리 Head of Transactions님께서 대신 참석해 주셨습니다. 순차 통역으로 진행되는 만큼 연사분들께서는 천천히 말씀해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. Dear speakers, the floor is now open for questions and we will be entertaining questions from the audience. As the mode of interpretation for this session is consecutive, please remember to moderate your speed and also to pause for the interpreter every few sentences. Thank you. We'll now be taking questions. 네, 먼저 두 박사님께 질문이 있습니다. 현재 영국 바이오텍 IPO 상황 및 분위기에 대해서 궁금합니다. We first have a question for Dr. Du. Now we are wondering about the biotech IPO landscape in the UK right now. What is the atmosphere and what is the situation like? Thank you. Um, yes, um, London is the, well, the, the global financial center. So it's uh, very easy to get access funding. 예, 지금 잘 아시다시피 런던 같은 경우에는 세계의 금융 센터이기도 합니다. 그렇기 때문에 사실 자금 조달이나 펀딩 같은 것들은 비교적 용이한 편인데요. And uh, so some of the UK companies is um, avoiding go to America rather than doing IPO in London. So it's like uh, last year, if you remember, one of the company from Oxford called Nanopole listed in the UK. 예, 그러다 보니까 이제 영국 회사들 같은 경우에도 사실 미국으로 굳이 가기보다는 그냥 영국 내에서의 IPO 진행을 선호하곤 합니다. 그래서 작년 같은 경우에도 이제 나노폴드라는 옥스포드 쪽 기업이 영국에 상장을 했었던 IPO를 했었던 적이 있습니다. Of course, there's a trend. A lot of companies want to go to US to do the IPO, but the UK government is very committed to encourage UK companies or even overseas companies to do IPO here. So we've got a lot of government support here. 예, 물론 이제 미국 쪽에서 IPO를 하는 것이 일종의 트렌드처럼 받아들여지다 보니 또 이제 미국행을 선호하는 기업들도 있긴 하지만 영국 정부에서는 영국 회사들뿐만 아니라 또 해외 기업들도 영국 내에서 IPO를 할수 있도록 상당히 많은 지원을 제공하고 있는 상황입니다. So, so in, in, in summary, it is very uh, active market and uh, we we'll welcome you to do IPOs here. 예, 따라서 정리하자면은 지금 영국은 IPO 시장이 상당히 활성화되어 있는 활발한 활동이 이루어지고 있는 상황이라서 한국 기업들도 언제든지 와주십사 환영하는 바입니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. 네, 두, 박, 두 국장님 답변 감사합니다. 어, 두 번째 질문이 있는데요. 어, 이번에는 메디시티 이바나 책임자님께 여쭤보고자 합니다. 메디시티의 기업 대학 협력 모델에 대해서 궁금합니다. 사례로 예를 들어서 설명해 주시면 좋을 것 같고요. 또한 정부나 지자체의 지원금을 어, 외국 기업, 즉 국내 기업이 받을 수 있는지도 궁금합니다. We have a second question directed to Dr. Ivana. So we are curious about, we would like to learn about the industry university collaboration model of MedCity. And so it would be great if you could provide specific examples of such collaboration projects. And also, would it be possible for a Korean company uh, to access the support funds from either the UK central government or the local government? Thank you for the question. Uh, so it has two parts, so I will answer one and then the second. Um, on industry um, collaborations with universities, MedCity has a couple of uh, already existing platforms depending on the technology type. 
예, 두 가지 질문을 주신 걸로 뭐 이해가 되기 때문에 지금 우선 하나씩 다뤄보도록 하겠습니다. 우선 첫 번째 질문을 주셨었던 어, 메드시티 기업과 대학 협력 모델에 대해서 답변을 드리자면 우선 그 테크놀로지 타입이 무엇인지에 따라서 사용하실 수 있는 플랫폼이 이미 두 종류가 마련이 되어 있는 상태입니다. Uh, the first platform is a collaborate to innovate. And it's a platform that provides uh, both the collaboration opportunity and funding. 우선 첫 번째 플랫폼은 Collaborate to Innovate라는 이름을 가지고 있고 기본적으로 이런 협업과 그리고 또 자금 조달, 즉 펀딩을 위한 지원을 해주는 플랫폼입니다. Companies apply to uh, do a collaborative project with one of the four universities or NHS centers that are members of our platform. and then are um, going through a selection process. 우선 회사들은 저희의 속해 저희에게 회원으로 접속해 있는 NHS 기관들이나 아니면 네 개의 기업 네 개의 대학들 중 하나와 협업 프로젝트를 하고 싶다라는 신청서를 우선 제출하시게 되고 선정 과정들을 거치시게 됩니다. If they are successful, they uh, through the process uh, they receive a partner organization interest. So one of the universities uh, applies to work together with them, and then they jointly receive the funding uh, through the Med City uh, to do a, a small scale project. 그래서 우선 그 선정 과정에서 통과를 하시게 되면은 저희 아까 말씀을 드렸었던 저희 회원 대학들이나 아니면 NHS 그 기관들 중에서 어, 이 회사와 우리가 협업을 하고 싶다라고 우선 손을 드는 그러한 조직이 있을 겁니다. 그렇다면 이제 해당 대학이나 아니면 기관과 같이 연결이 되시는 거고 그 다음에 매드시티를 통해서 이제 작은 소규모의 어떤 연구 프로젝트를 수행을 할수 있을 정도의 펀딩을 지원받으시게 됩니다. Uh, focus uh, areas for um, this type of collaboration for MedCity are advanced therapies, data and AI, and diagnostic technologies. 그리고 지금 그 메드시티 쪽에서 이제 이런 프로젝트들을 수행을 하기 위해서 포커스를 맞추고 있는 부분들은 지금 첨단 치료 분야 그리고 또 데이터 AI 그리고 진단 진단법들입니다. Uh, on the question of the funding, so for most of the government and local government funding, a company needs to be registered in the UK to apply. 예, 우선 그리고 또 이제 두 번째로 질문을 주셨었던 작은 지원과 관련된 부분 살펴보자면은 우선 영국에서 영국 정부나 지자체로부터 펀딩 지원을 받기 위해서는 영국의 이제 법인으로 등록이 되어 있으셔야 합니다. However, they can apply for a collaboration with a university, NHS or a charity partner for most of the government um, grants that are available for life sciences. 예, 그러나 만약 이제 희망을 하신다면은 지금 영국 내 대학이나 NHS나 아니면은 체리티 파트너들과 함께 협업을 하는 방식으로 어떤 프로젝트를 수행을 하실 수 있고 그렇게 하시게 되는 경우에는 지금 이제 생명 과학 분야에 대해서 영국 정부가 지원을 하고 있는 대부분의 그랜트 펀딩을 액세스 하실 수 있습니다. And finally, for the private funding company, obviously doesn't need to be from the UK. And we work with many international companies uh, to connect them pr primarily with VC uh, investors and um, facilitate uh, potential um, investment. 예, 그러나 이제 물론 그 프라이빗 펀딩을 받으시기 위해서는 굳이 영국의 법인 설립이 되어 있거나 하지 않으셔도 되고요. 그렇기 때문에 저희는 현재 여러 이제 글로벌, 그러니까 전 세계에 있는 이제 많은 회사들이 영국에 있는 VC들과 연결이 될수 있도록 그렇게 해서 이 영국 VC들을 통해서 투자를 유치하실 수 있도록 지원해 드리고 있습니다. 네, 답변 감사합니다. 어, 이번 질문 또한 이바나 박사님께 들어온 내용인데요. 어, Advanced Therapy Network의 회원이 되면 가장 큰 이점이 무엇이 있을지요? Okay, thank you for that answer. And we have another question directed to you, Dr. Ivana Boparek. It says, uh, what is the biggest advantage or biggest benefit that we might be able to enjoy should we become a member of the Advanced Therapies Network? Thank you for the question. Um, I think the biggest advantage is um, the number of uh, researchers that are part of the network already and opportunities to work with uh, various organizations directly. So it's 
a very large uh, network of uh, people who are already ready to collaborate. 네, 질문 감사드립니다. 일단 제가 봤을 때 가장 큰 장점이라면 이미 저희 네트워크에 속해 있는 상당히 많은 연구자분들과 이제 소위 연결이 되실 수 있는 기회를 확보하시는 것이라고 생각을 합니다. 그렇기 때문에 이미 이제 어떤 다른 주체와 협업을 할 준비와 그리고 또 이제 많은 의지를 가지고 있는 여러 조직들이나 여러 연구자들과 직접적으로 연결되셔서 일하실 수 있는 기회를 확보하실 수 있다는 게큰 장점입니다. And the second advantage is the number of experts that are part of the network and a lot of advice that can be accessed for free uh, through the various organizations that are uh, our members. 예, 그리고 또두 번째 이점은 지금 현재 저희 네트워크에 상당히 많은 그런 수의 다양한 분야에 대한 전문가 분들이 계신다라는 겁니다. 그렇기 때문에 지금 저희 조직에 어, 그러니까 회원으로 계시는 여러 기관이나 단체에 계시는 이런 전문가들로부터 무료 자문 같은 것들도 상당히 많이 받으실 수 있습니다. 네, 이반희 박사님 답변 감사합니다. 어, 이번에는 세렌진 테라피 캐타펄트 쪽으로 들어온 질문인데요. 현재 영국에서 허가받은 세렌진 치료제는 어떤 것들이 있고 혹시 영국에서 어, 이 첨단 의학품을 개발하는 데 있어서 뭔가 장점이 있을까요? Thank you very much for that answer. And our next question is directed to our representatives from the cell and gene therapy catapult. So we, our question is, Uh, what are some of the cell and gene therapies that are already approved in the UK? And also, what are some of the advantages of carrying out the development for these advanced therapies in the UK? Well, as you are aware, uh, most of the approved um, cell and gene therapies in the UK is um, a Europe-wide approval, such as the one from Navartis and also uh, uh, Kite. Um, a lot of the UK uh, development are still at the clinical stage, so they are going towards uh, approvals very soon. Um, but we haven't got uh, many of the UK uh, developed uh, therapies which are currently approved at the moment. 예, 우선 지금 이제 영국 내에서 승인을 받은 사전진 테라피들 같은 경우에는 대부분 이제 영국 마, 영국 내에서 개발했다라기보다는 이제 유럽 전체에서 승인을 받은 뭐 노바티스라든지 카이트라든지 이런 회사들에서 개발을 한 그러한 사전진 테라피들입니다. 영국 내에서 개발을 하고 있는 소위 영국 태생의 사전진 테라피들은 지금 현재 임상 연구 단계에 있고 곧 아마 승인 단계로 넘어가리라고 생각이 됩니다만 아직은 지금 자체 개발해서 승인을 받은 것은 없습니다. 네, 답변 감사합니다. 어, 셀 엔진 테라피 쪽으로 또 하나의 질문이 들어왔는데 혹시 한국 기업과 함께 협력한 사례가 있는지요? 만약에 없다면 해외 기업과 협력한 사례가 있는지 공유 부탁드립니다. Another question for cell and gene therapy catapult. Now we are wondering whether you have any experience collaborating with a Korean company. And if not, well, then could you still provide us with a brief example of your collaboration with an overseas company? Yeah, um, so we have quite a few collaborations with Korean farmers uh, of various sizes, uh, medium uh, biotech and all the way to big farmers. Um, I wouldn't name them here today, uh, but you will be able to see them at a press release previously. Um, so we have supported a big pharma in Korea um, on our feasibility studies for the clinical trial in the UK in the past. 네, 일단 저희가 한국 기업들과도 이미 여러 건의 협업 사례들을 가지고 있습니다. 그래서 이제 그 중소기업들에서부터 시작해서 소위 한국의 빅파마라고 부를 수 있는 제약 회사들과도 협업한 사례들이 있는데요. 제가 여기에서 그 회사 명들은 밝혀지 못할 것 같습니다만 아마도 보도자료나 이런 것들을 통해, 통해서 이미 접해보셨으리라고 생각이 됩니다. 저희가 진행을 했었던 협업 사례 같은 경우에는 영국에서 임상 연구를 진행하는 것과 관련된 타당성, 연, 타당성 분석을 진행하시는 것을 지원해드린 경우 그런 것들이 있습니다. 네, 답변 감사합니다. 다음은 어, 국제통상부 부국장님께 또 들어온 질문인데요. 해외 기업이 영국에서 R&D 그랜트 펀딩을 받을 수 있는지 궁금하고요. 어, 외국 기업이 영국에 법인 설립을 하게 되는 경우 더 용이해지는지요? We have another question directed to Dr. Du. And uh, we are wondering whether overseas companies would be able to access the R&D grant funding 
uh, of uh, of the UK? And would it be easier uh, to gain that access should the foreign company actually establish a business entity within the UK? Yes, um, I think that the general rule is if the company uh, registered in the UK, we treat you as a UK company. And uh, so if your SME, if it's a smaller company, you can claim R&D credit you know, up to 40% of, of your R&D research. So that's a very attractive proposition. 예, 만약 그러니까, 저, 그러니까 영국 같은 경우에는 이제 기본적인 원칙 자체가 영국 내 법인을 설립을 한 기업이라면 이제 영국 기업들과 동등한 대우를 한다라는 것입니다. 그래서 예를 들어서 이제 중소기업들이 어, 영국에 법인 설립을 하셔서 영국 내에서 연구 등을 지원을 하시게 되는 경우에는 지금 이제 그 R&D 크레딧을 40%까지 청구를 하실 수 있습니다. 다시 말해서 영국 영국 R&D와 관련된 그 비용 지출의 40%에 대해서 크레딧을 받으실 수 있다라는 건데 상당히 매력적인 혜택이라고. And as a result, big farmers globally, I think the top 25 big farmers all have their R&D centers in the UK. And one of the reasons, another reason is UK got a really good talent pool. That's through my talk. I think this, we have a lot of expertise in this field. 네, 그러다 보니 이제 그 소위 빅파마들, 뭐 세계 이제 상위 25위 정도에 드는 그런 빅파마들 중에 대부분이 영국의 R&D 센터를 두고 있는 상태입니다. 그리고 이제 이것 외에도 영국에서 많은 기업들이 이제 R&D를 하는 것에 큰 매력 포인트를 느끼는 이유 중에 하나가 앞서서 제가 발표에서도 말씀을 드렸었던 것처럼 저희의 인재풀입니다. 상당히 많은 주제 전문가들 그리고 또 많은 인재들이 영국에 있습니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다. 어, 부국장님께 또 들어온 질문인데요. 어, 국제통상부가 외국 기업의 영국 시장 진출에 도움을 준다고 하셨는데 구체적으로 어떤 지원을 제공하고 계신지 궁금합니다. We have another question for Dr. Du. Now, based on your presentation, we understand that the Department of International Trade provides support to overseas companies that are trying to establish a presence within the UK market. So could you tell us in, uh, specifically what kind of support is going to be rendered to these companies? Thank you. Yes, um, we have a team here to, to give you advice how to, how to set up your company here. And the secondly, we can uh, help you to find the location, which, which science park or which center available for you. 네, 질문 감사드립니다. 우선 기본적으로 저희가 이제 해외 기업들이 영국 내에서 법인 설립 등을 하시는 것들을 지원을 해드릴 수 있는 팀을 보유를 하고 있고 그 외에 이제 그 회사의 물리적인 그러한 위치를 잡으시기 위해서 영국 내에 존재하고 있는 사이언스 파크나 여러 개의 센터들 중에서 어떠한 곳이 가장 각, 각 기업별로 적합한지 그런 입지 등을 선택하시는 데도 지원을 드립니다. And also uh, from time to time, uh, we will help you Uh, to introduce you to the UK funding scheme. Basically, the government released funding towards uh, small companies. And uh, so that's, you know, just like last week, um, Office of Life Sciences just announced their manufacturer funding, 60 million pounds for UK companies. So we have a lot of companies contact us asking us for advice. 네, 그리고 또 이제 경우에 따라서는 영국 정부에서 이제 제공을 하고 있는 여러 가지 연구 관련 연구비 관련 그런 프로젝트에 대한 소개들을 도와드리기도 합니다. 그래서 바로 지난 주만 해도 영국의 생명과학청에서 약 6천만 파운드에 달하는 연구비 지원 프로그램을 발표를 한바 있고 이것을 어떻게 하면 그러면 받을 수 있는지에 대해서 많은 기업들의 연락을 받은 상태입니다. And also some companies um, want to think about Europe or USA. For their, for their international expansion, but we can do a modeling to, uh, to, to convince you UK probably is the best place to do business because we have uh, you know, um, all, the, all the laws, all the, all the regulations is in favor of overseas investors. And also the cost for set up companies in the UK is much less than other countries. 네. 그리고 또 이제 일부 회사들 같은 경우에는 아마 미국이라든지 유럽 쪽으로의 진출을 검토를 하고 계시는 경우도 있으실 것 같은데요. 사실 이제 그러한 그 목적지보다는 왜 영국이 비즈니스를 하기 위한 가장의 최적지인지를 잘 설득해 드릴 수 있는 그런 모델링도 진행을 해봐 드릴 수 있습니다. 
잘 아시다시피 영국 같은 경우에는 해외 기업들의 영국 내 진출에 상당히 도움이 되는 그런 해외 기업 친화적인 법률과 그래도 규제 규정들을 상당히 많이 가지고 있고 그리고 또 법인 설립 등에 드는 소요가 되는 비용들도 다른 국가들에 비해서 훨씬 더 저렴합니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 네, 부국장님 발, 어, 답변 감사합니다. 어, 시간이 이제 얼마 남지 않아서 마지막 질문을 하나 받아보고자 하는데요. 이번에는 메드시티의 이바나 박사님께 들어온 질문입니다. 앞서 그 SK바이오사이언스랑 리프트사 사례를 살짝 언급해 주셨는데 이 외에 혹시 외국 제약기업 또는 바이오벤처 기업들이 메디시티를 통해 영국에 진출한 사례가 구체적으로 어떤 게 있는지 조금 사례를 들어서 설명을 부탁드립니다. Okay, thank you very much for that answer, Dr. Du. I think due to the time constraint, we might be able to entertain just one more question, which we have up here. And I think this is directed to Dr. Ivana. So you have already shared with us the examples of SK Bioscience and Lyft, with whom you have collaborated. Now, other than for these companies, would you be able to give us more examples of overseas pharma companies or bio ventures that have actually been able to do, start doing business within the UK through MedCity? And also, could to give us some details about what kind of support you can provide for them. Thank you for the question. I wouldn't uh, name any companies because uh, we need to obviously get their uh, permission to mention them in events like this. Uh, there, if you are interested in specific examples, uh, there are case studies on our websites that you can see that, that we have done with the overseas companies. 예, 질문 감사드립니다. 사실 저희가 이제 그 저희가 같이 협업을 했었던 기업들의 이름을 이러한 행사에서 공식적으로 언급을 하려면 해당 기업들의 사전 허가를 좀 받아야 되는 상황이라 여기에서 제가 해당 이름들을 공유해 드리지는 못할 것 같고요. 구체적인 사례나 케이스다리가 궁금하신 분들은 저희 웹사이트에 오시면 관련 정보들을 찾으실 수 있습니다. Um, I can only mention we work with companies now from every continent. But our traditional markets of interest have always been uh, primarily Japan and Korea. And we have worked with a lot of pharma companies from Korea looking to locate uh, in London. Okay. 그리고 제가 지금 이 자리에서 일단 언급을 해드릴 수 있는 것은 저희가 모든 대륙에 있는 국가들의 기업들과 같이 협업해 본 적이 있다라는 데까지 말씀을 드릴 수 있고요. 그리고 또 상당히 이제 많은 관심을 보이고 있었던 국가 시장들은 일본과 전통적으로 일본과 영, 한국 등입니다. 그래서 한국 기업들과도 저희가 협업한 사례가 다수 있다라고 여기서 말씀드릴 수 있을 것 같습니다. Uh, in terms of support available, uh, we help companies with anything from finding the appropriate facility, so lab space, office space in London. 그리고 이제 기업들을 통해 위해서 저희가 제공을 하는 지원들 같은 경우에는 그러니까 저희가 사실 이제 도움이 될수 있는 모든 부분에 대해서 지원을 해드린다고 보시면 될것 같습니다. 그래서 예를 들어서 이제 실험실이나 아니면 사무실 같은 것들을 그러니까 하실 사무실 같은 것들을 설립하실 수 있는 어떤 공간 확보나 이제 입지 확보 이런 것들에 대한 지원도 하고 있고 We can also help with obtaining the visa for innovators uh, coming into the UK as we are one of the organizations that works together with the home office uh, to uh, provide letters of support. 예, 그리고 또그 외에 이제 이러한 혁신적인 연구 등을 진행을 하시는 그러한 인력이 영국으로 이제 오실 수 있도록 그분들의 비자 신청과 비자 확보 등에 대한 지원도 할수 있습니다. 예를 들어서 지금 저희는 이제 영국의 홈 오피스와 함께 협업을 해서 영국 내 비자를 취득하시기 위해서 필요로 하는 추천서라든지 이런 것들을 제공을 해드리는 그런 지원들도 하고 있습니다. Uh, we provide access to the investment through the um, our investment hub that I mentioned uh, in my presentation. 그리고 또 제가 발표에서 언급을 했었던 인베스트먼트 허브를 통해서 투자 유치 그리고 그러니까 유치하실 수 있는 투자금에 대한 접근성 확보 등도 지원하고 있습니다. And finally, uh, we work together with our founding uh, partners, uh, London universities, uh, King's College London, Imperial College London, uh, University College London, and Queen Mary University. Uh, to provide access to collaboration with researchers, uh, both in um, academic labs in, and in London hospitals. 
그리고 그 외에도 이제 아까 말씀을 드렸었던 저희의 그 그러니까 설립 기, 설립 협업 병원들과 병원들과 그리고 또 여러 대학들과 함께 네트워킹을 하시고 또 연구 관련 협업 등을 하실 수 있도록 도와드리고 있습니다. 그래서 런던 유니버시티라든지 킹스 컬러지 임페리얼 컬러지 런던 퀸 메리스 유니버시티 등등의 이러한 대학들과 함께 협업을 하시고 연구 그쪽 관련 연구 시설이라든지 연구 기관과 함께 연락을 취하실 수 있도록 도와드리고 있습니다. So, um, just in summary, we can help you set up and then navigate the very complex system of research we have in the London and through our sister organizations in the wider uh, UK. 네, 따라 정리하자면 영국 내에서 이제 필요하신 영국 내로 진출을 하시고 필요하신 셋업을 하시고 또그 외에 영국 내에 존재하고 있는 다소 복잡하다고도 보이실 수 있는 어떤 연구 관련 네트워크를 이해하시고 그 안에서 필요한 주체들을 찾아 나가실 수 있도록 도와드릴 수 있습니다. 도와드릴 수 있습니다. 저희 자체적인 그러한 네트워크와 그리고 또 영국 전역에 걸친 그러한 저희의 이제 그 자매 결연이 되어 있는 기관과 조직들을 통해서 이런 지원들을 해드릴 수 있습니다. 네, 연사분들 모두 감사합니다. 시간 관계상 모든 질문에 대답을 해드리지 못하는 점 양해 바랍니다. 이것으로 질의응답 시간을 마무리하겠습니다. 추가 질의사항이 있는 분들께서는 온라인 설문을 통해 질문을 제출해 주시면 연사분들께 별도로 요청하여 답변을 받은 후 회신 드리도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 연사분들께 감사 말씀드리며 참석해 주신 여러분 모두 의미 있는 시간이 되셨기를 바랍니다. 앞서 안내드린 대로 웨비나가 끝난 뒤 이메일로 배포되는 온라인 설문에 많은 참여 바랍니다. 이상으로 UK Life Science Webinar Opportunities in the UK를 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다.